welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we are gonna make a really cool soap using cucumbers, real cucumbers, and a heavy load of green clay. And the inspiration is this fragrance I got from Nature's Garden. It's called Cucum or Garden Mint and Cucumber. And it's really fresh smelling. Um, it's not too minty, not too vegetable-y. It's just really fresh, it's it kind of spa-like. I'm loving it. Um, I've not soaked with this before, but it got really good reviews. It says it didn't cause discoloration, acceleration, separation, rising, all of that. So I'm looking forward to using this today. So like I said, I've got to get to the store and buy a cucumber. We're going to peel it and mash it up and strain out all of the cucumber juice. And that will be part of my lye solution. And then I'm going to do a heavy load. I buy this in bulk. This is a French green clay. It's not very green colored, but it's beautiful. And green clay has some beautiful skin properties and benefits. I love it. So I'm going to forego the kale and clay in lieu of my green clay because, you know, kind of went with the mint and cucumber theme. And just to pump it up, because I want this to be a little extra special, I'll do the green clay and everything, a nice heavy like double portion of clay. And then I will take off a little portion and do a swirl. And I have this baby grasshopper green from Wholesale Supplies Plus, just a little wispy swirl. I just want it to look pretty and kind of represent, you know, and it's got the green theme and the cucumber and all of that, but I, you know, I couldn't resist a little swirl in there. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on top, probably just a scoop or something simple because the main show is gonna be the clay and the real cucumber in this bar. And I will be sharing the full recipe down below. It's going to be a tallow soap recipe, and uh, it'll be written down, and I'll talk you through it as we make this soap today. So let's get everything pulled together. Again, I got to get to the store and go buy a cucumber. I don't have one in the house right now, but we will come back and make some cucumber and clay soap. Okay, before I get going on doing the cucumber and I wanted to show you this mint tea I got and the only ingredient in here is just dehydrated peppermint leaves so there's no other additives in this tea and I was thinking about doing a little sprinkle on the top just to represent the mint in this scent notes um, but before we get to this I need to get my oils prepped and ready because when it comes time to puree my cucumber I might add a little bit of the oils into the mix to make it a really smooth puree you don't want any chunks when you're using a fresh fruit or vegetable in your soap if it is pureed absolutely smooth it can all work into the saponification and be preserved if there's chunks in there you'll run into trouble so I'm gonna push this off to the side and we need to get our oils prepped and ready so that I have some oils to put in here and run with my cucumber Okay, the first oil I'm gonna be measuring out today is coconut oil. I'm working in ounces, but I will have the recipe in percentage and grams down below also, but I need 25 ounces of coconut oil for this batch, and I am making a 100 ounce of oils batch, and then you have to factor the lye solution in there for my batch size, but anyway, we're working up to 100 total, so it's really easy with the percentages. It's 25% coconut, 25 ounces of coconut oil. All right, and the next ingredient is 24 ounces of tallow, and I am using a grass-fed non-GMO tallow that I got on Amazon, and I'll leave a link down below. 24 ounces. Okay, the next hard butter is shea butter, and I need six ounces of shea butter, and then I'm gonna melt these down before I add the liquid oils. So let's get our shea butter in here. All right, I've got my hard oils and butters gently melted down, and now it's time to add our liquid oils. So the first one is castor oil. I love castor oil in soap at a low percentage um, because it is a lather supporter. Castor really works in tandem with coconut oil to create abundant lather, and I love that. I got this on Amazon. It was a really good price. So I need four ounces of castor oil in here.
All right, and the last oil in this recipe is olive oil. I got this at Sam's Club. Um, I've bought it at Costco, Soper's Choice. There's a lot of places to get olive oil. I just hunt around for the best price that I can find. And Sam, uh, Sam's Club or Costco, no, Sam's Club <laughs> had it. Um, so anyway, olive oil is what's going in and I need 41 ounces of olive oil. All right, now I have my oils all ready to go here. Well, let's get our cucumber out and start prepping that. I need to get the cucumber pureed out and weighed so that I know how much liquid to put into my lye solution. We'll talk about that in a second as I get the cucumber. All right, it's time to prep our cucumber. This is one of those English hothouse type cucumbers, very little seeds and stuff, a lot of flesh in there. I am gonna peel it. You can do this with the peeling or you can shave the peels off and dehydrate them and grind them up and add them back. Lots of options. Today, I'm just gonna peel it. I just want the meat of the cucumber to kind of add to the essence of this. And this is gonna be so wonderful as part of our water portion of the soap. So let me get this peeled. This is what I use to bevel the edges of my soap, my handy dandy peeler here. Okay, let's talk about how we're gonna add this uh, cucumber in as part of our water volume today and how I do that when I add purees or milks or anything like that that comes out of the liquid portion. So for the oils and the volume I'm using today, which is 100 ounces and the type of oils, the amount of lye needed for today's recipe for me is 14.10 ounces of sodium hydroxide, and this is making a 5% super fat. So I've already run the numbers through a soap calculator, and I know I like 5% super fat, so that's what we're working with. So 14.10 ounces of sodium hydroxide, which means I need to use at least that much water to mix it with. You can never add less water than your sodium hydroxide or you will have a volcanoing effect. So I know that I need at least 14.10 uh, of water or aloe. I'm gonna be using a combination of aloe and water. We'll talk about that when we get there. But I like to go a little bit more than that. Today I'm shooting for approximately 18 ounces of aloe water and then six ounces of cucumber puree. I am making a double batch today also, so when I weigh this out, I'm gonna try to grab 12 ounces, but I have a little playroom. I hope this is not sounding confusing. <laughs> so whatever recipe you're using and whatever amount of lye you're using, you can now go with that as your measure for how you wanna play with mixing and additives. I am doing this at a 24% water amount. So that's 24% of the oils I like to do um, in my soaps, which is a steep water discount, but the, I'm comfortable soaping with that. A lot of soap recipe calculators will have 38% of volume per water, um, but I prefer 24 to 30% is my comfort zone. So that's the way I work. Now I'm just gonna dice this up and start measuring it out here to see how much cucumber I actually have. And we'll kind of go from there. And again, I've got some playroom. As long as I'm using at least, let's call it 15 ounces of water to mix my lye with, all those extra ounces can be in cucumber or additives, liquid additives. The other thing about purees and additives is um, when you're using a fresh fruit or vegetable, a rule of thumb is to not go more than one ounce per pound of oils. So that's just something to consider. Um, you don't wanna go too heavy of a load, otherwise the soap can't carry it and preserve it. But if you stay at or under one ounce per pound, um, it's no problem. It will be preserved throughout the saponification process. I usually like to do, you know, a half an ounce per pound of oils or less. I don't like to overload fresh ingredients in my soap and you don't need to. This amount is gonna be enough. It's gonna give it, you know, a little extra something. So let me weigh all this chunks out here and see what we've got. Okay, so I have about eight ounces of cucumber here. I'm gonna split this in half. So each batch is gonna get four ounces of cucumber. And when I get it emulsified to a complete smooth, um, absolutely smooth liquefied uh, substance, it's gonna saponify in there perfectly. 
So let's get this blended up. All right, so I've got half of my cucumbers here. I'm gonna start just using my stick blender in here and see how smooth we can get it just on its own. And then I can add, this cucumber will go with this pot of oils and I'll do the same with the other one off screen here. Um, I can add a little bit of oil to help emulse or get this really blended smoothly. <laughs> It's blending up really good, but I'm gonna add some oil and you don't have to measure this because this is gonna all go right back in the oils as the, not milk and oil, but puree and oil method. So um, I don't have to worry about pouring this off and keeping track of how much because it's going right back in the big pot after I get this completely smoothed out. All right, so I wanna show you, it looks really smooth, but when I lift my blender up, you can see chunks. I don't wanna see any chunks. So I'm gonna keep blending till this is frothy and absolutely liquefied. All right, we have a nice smooth puree on our cucumber. So I'm putting the blender in here and let's go ahead and just add it right on into our oils here. Isn't that such a pretty color, that celery green? Um, it doesn't, it's not gonna stay that color in the soap, but it's beautiful. And that's why the green clay is gonna come into, you know, effect. And then that little mica swirl, cause that, you know, the green just sort of represents. But there it is in here. Let's get the rest of our additives and get adding those on in. And then we can get to our lye solution. Now that we know we have four ounces of puree, we know how much water to use for our lye solution. All right, so the dry ingredients today are my colloidal oats. I'm gonna add a nice heaping two tablespoons in here and my French green clay. And I'm going to add, I'm gonna use this scoop again because I have a tiny little spoon in here. I buy it in bulk and store it in this mason jar, but um, I am going to do four tablespoons of French green clay in this batter because I know the soap can handle that much and I love it. This is gonna have such a nice slippy lather with that. So there's the dry ingredients. And I'm going to add my fragrance in here now also because it got such good reviews on behavior. I'm not worried about it accelerating and I like to just get it in there so I don't have any chance of forgetting about it. So let me grab my fragrance. All right, here is my fragrance and I'm adding this at a rate of 5% fragrance oil, which is what was recommended for this scent. So again, with any fragrance or essential oil, look up the usage rate and, um, and then you'll be safe. And any good fragrance supplier will give the usage rates. Um, I don't recommend buying fragrant oils on Amazon um, unless you know the distributor and they offer things like that but a good distributor will also give you the usage rate in different products from soaps to lotions and bath bombs. And um, so look for that. All right, let's get all these additives blended up here. So much goodness in this pot, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Are back to make our lye solution and today I'm going to be doing a 50-50 distilled water aloe vera lye solution. You could do 100% aloe vera, you could do 100% water, totally up to you. You could even do cucumber juice but today I'm doing aloe vera and water and I like the 50-50 split. Um, it's just what I do when I do an aloe vera soap and you get a good amount of aloe and this really goes along with the sort of spa zen like scent of this. I just think it really goes with the theme. So I need 20 ounces of liquid in here. I'm going to do 10 ounces of aloe, 10 ounces of water. All right, here is our liquid. Let me scoot the scale out of the way. And I am gonna add my sugar to my lye water. You can leave this out if you don't want to. I use unbleached cane sugar. You can use white sugar, powdered sugar, or no sugar at all. What sugar does in a soap is it's a lather booster and creator. It makes a really abundant lather. And so going along with the coconut oil and the castor, this just sort of 
makes a beautiful combination with them and I love a bubbly bar of soap. That's why I added in here. And uh, if I was doing a fruit puree, because fruits are sweet, they're much higher in sugar than that cucumber, I would not add this, but cucumber is really low in sugar content. It does you know, have a trace amount in there, but I'm adding this because I want those bubbles. So to this amount of liquid, I'm gonna go ahead and add about two tablespoons of sugar. You could add less. Again, this is just extra. I love extra, so <laughs> it's up to you if you wanna put that in or not. So what you have to do though is dissolve this before we add our sodium hydroxide because if you add the lye and this is not dissolved, it will just caramelize and it won't melt and you'll get a big you know, caramel glump in the bottom of your water and um, ask me how I know. <laughs> Trial and error. Your girl here has learned everything the hard way, I think, making soap. I've made every mistake in the book. Um, so I wanna encourage you, if you're a new soaper, and you are struggling or you've had some fails, please don't give up. I have made every mistake you can make and you learn from it. Every time I make a mistake, I learn something new. So learn to embrace those challenges. <laughs> All right, after this is dissolved, I'm gonna get my silk because you know I love my extras. This is Tussa Silk Fiber and I got this on Amazon and it is a pretty rough um, skein, I guess you would call it. It has little bits and stuff in it. Um, it's not just pure refined silk. I have used mulberry silk in the past and I really like that. So I will use what I have, I don't waste, but when this is done, I'm probably gonna buy mulberry silk next, next time. I just found it a teeny bit smoother in the rough state, but I do love my silk. And again, the silk is an additive you can leave out if you don't want to put it in there. If you're vegan, leave it out. But I love, it gives a sheen to the wet bar of soap and a glossy look and it, add silkiness to the lather, which I love. So here's my silk. Again, you, you can see it's just natural. It has not been refined or anything. So it just has little, you know, natural bits in it. But anyway, I'm taking, let's say about that much. I can't weigh this for you. It has no weight. It's literally like air, but a very small, like the top of a Q-tip or a small cotton ball amount. And more or less, you could add more, you could add less or none at all. It's up to you. I'm gonna sink that down and now let's go measure out our sodium hydroxide. And when that lye hits the water, it heats up so much, it'll melt that silk right up. All right here is 14.1 ounces of sodium hydroxide. Our lye solution, we got our silk in there and you don't have to go slow or anything. You just dump it in to our 20 ounces of liquid and we're gonna stir this and stand back. You don't wanna breathe those fumes, but you do wanna keep stirring until you don't feel any grit or granules. You wanna stir it until it's completely dissolved. Then you can just walk away and let it cool down or put it in an ice bath, but it's really important to keep stirring till all of it is dissolved. And that went really quick. The silk is 100% dissolved in here. Looks great. I am going to go put this in an ice bath so that we can get moving forward here quicker than later. Um, you can make your lye the first the day before you want to make soap and that way it can cool off just naturally sitting or ice bath works. You can even make your lye solution with ice cubes if you don't want to melt the silk in there and you're not worried about getting it warm. Ice cubes work fantastic for making a lye solution. All right, let's go get this cooled off. All right, well, I'm waiting for my lye solution to cool. I wanna talk about this peppermint tea. And again, this is just dehydrated peppermint leaves. So I'm gonna cut this little packet open and just sprinkle these on top. They smell so good and minty, and I think it will just complement this. And they're so teeny tiny that I'm not worried about these rinsing off your bar. I will just use them sparingly, but they're so cute and it goes along with the fragrance and the theme. So these are going on top. All right, we're back. It's time to make soap with our lye solution here. I got my tea leaves off in a little Dixie cup so I can sprinkle them easy. And I have my green mica dispersed in a little bit of water here so I can have my swirl and my hanger off to the side. And one of the reasons why I like to do such a steep water discount is so I have a little extra room to play with things like uh, additives when I add my titanium dioxide that is mixed in water. I like to pre-mix my mica. So there's definitely room in here for that. So let's get on to this. I'm hoping the 
cucumber made my oils here very thick feeling <laughs> so i'm a little cautious i'm going to stir gently and just kind of get a feel for how this is going but we got to get our lye solution in here and get this beauty in the mold the next day it's been about 24 hours and I cannot wait to get in here and see how that little green swirl came out I am just loving these and they smell so spa like and good today that uh, the fragrance really has blossomed and I'm so happy so let's get in here and see what's going on the inside and we'll talk more about this when we get to cutting back for soap cutting time and this smells great I'm wondering about the little spots I know that I pureed my cucumber to a smooth consistency so I don't know if those are just like little glycerin spots or what but let's get in here and I'm thinking I would really like to do a lather test at the end because I really want to see how the clay and the cucumber feels so um, I will make a point of remembering after several days of coming back in and doing a lather test for you all so we can see how this soap performs. I'm actually thinking those dots are green clay. It was a little clumpy. Um, I did blend for a good while. That is what I'm guessing, but I love the soft colors. These are just peaceful, kind of zen spa looking to me. And the scent really does not disappoint. It's holding up beautifully. Yeah, I'm th really thinking these spots are the green clay. Anyway, this did go through gel phase. So I believe that this is gonna lighten up. You see this creamier color? It's gonna lighten up as the uh, get air exposure and it finishes doing its soapy business that it is doing. I did put um, a blanket over my molds last night. So yeah, I believe this is a gel phase color, which will lighten up just a little. 
love the top it's just gentle that's the word that's coming to mind right now the swirls the scent the look is just gentle to me and i love that so this fragrance let's talk about that the oils with the cucumber puree was very thick and i was like oh boy this could go fast on me but it didn't once i added um, the lye solution things slowed down smoothed up and this was a nice slow moving fragrance very easy to work with so it's a two thumbs up from me all right well let's get on to our next loaf here is the middle loaf and I am saving the shavings and I'll be doing my little moon press flower at the end here because this is a nice, it's very soft today. I'm definitely going to have to wait probably a day before I come in to do my stamping and uh, beveling because these are just a little bit soft and I want to give them a chance to firm up really well before I come and start messing with them. I've said it before. And I will say it again, the stamping is kind of an aggressive um, action on your bars and you definitely want your bar to be nice and firm before you come in and start whacking things with a mallet. <laughs> Just, you know, to protect the bars. So patience is good and I'm probably gonna wait, I'm gonna call it about another 24 hours before I come in and do all of that. So I really like working with purees, uh, fruits, vegetable. I've done avocado soap, several different kinds of fruits. I've used apples, um, apples, mango, papaya, pear, um, and I have really loved each and every one of them. I just think purees are just a fun ingredient. It has a good label appeal, and I personally think it makes for a fabulous lather also. All right, let's get into the last loaf of the bar that I made on screen here. So I want you to notice the beautiful creamy color there and then the inside, this is gonna lighten up to that. Usually takes, you know, about 48 hours or so to kind of let it finish doing its saponification thing. And then unless you have a vanillin scent that's gonna do some major discoloring, that can take a while, but when you have just the gel phase sort of finishing up um, about 48 hours and you're gonna get your color. This was a fun one to make. I really enjoyed this. I hope you give the recipe a try down below. I have it written out in all the different forms. Um, and I hope you give it a try. And if you do, let me know how you like it. Or if you use a recipe similar to that with the ratios, um, I'm anxious to, again, do the lather test. We'll definitely do that. I'm gonna leave a sticky note for myself so I don't forget. <laughs> Cause you know, I can be prone to forget the little things sometimes uh, if it's out of my norm, but I will leave a note. We'll do a lather test at the end. Cause uh, yeah, I, I wanna try one of these. Well, I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a little bit of a longish one and thank you for sticking it out if you made it all the way to the end here. I appreciate you so much. And I do hope that you have a wonderful day.
right, I've remembered to do the lather test. Yay, so we're gonna do that in a minute, but I wanna talk about the spots that we had, the green clay, what I believe was green clay spots, and they have sort of absorbed in and really become light, and I just love the finished look on these. I'm so happy. Let's give this a lather test. This is one of the little end slices. I stamp them on the side and they're like a half size bar and I give these, this is what I bring into my shower. This is what I give to my kids when they come. They grab a handful of these. So these are just little sample bars that um, friends and family. And the little tea leaves kind of browned up a little, but you can smell them. They're minty and cute and they will come off when we use this. Let's dip it in here and see. I just have warm water and it feels so smooth. That's that clay in there, I tell you what. I love a clay heavy soap and bubbles immediately. It's just really creamy feeling. So nice. Oh, this is a great bar. I am tickled pink with this. Should be tickled green, right? All right, look at that big abundant lather. I wish you could feel how beautiful and luxurious this feels. I mean, it just builds up so quick. Love it. Mm, it smells spa-like. That cucumber mint together is such a beautiful spa combination. Really big bubbly lather. I am loving this. So that cucumber is a big win for me. That is some luscious, luscious lather here with the clay and the aloe vera and the cucumber. Oh, this soap is a total winner. I hope you give the recipe a try. It is fabulous.